So Al, the other day you told us about putting the central heating on in the summer for five minutes. Have you got any other tips that you can tell us about? Yeah, I guess another good one is the stopcock, the main stopcock to your house. This one obviously needs checking not just in the summer but all through the year just to make sure that it works. I'd say every two to three months just to give it a little twist and a turn, make sure it's working. But you know what? A lot of people don't even know where their stopcock is. <laughs> so probably the first priority would be locate it first, okay. Secondly, make sure you've got plenty of access to the stopcock that you can reach it easy in an emergency. Like ours, make sure that it's totally, oh, where'd that lot come from? <laughs> Shut up. So as you can guess, I couldn't be bothered to clear that light out in front of my stopcock. <clears throat> so uh, we'll move on, I'll show you one that I brought up from the garage. Now here was a humble stopcock. So I know usually it will be pointing upwards like that, pipe coming up through the bottom of the cupboard. Not always in the cupboard, that's why I say do locate it. Now what you've got to do, just turn it off, make sure it's free and easy. When it reaches the end you'll feel it bite and you should be able to feel the washer there. Now go and try the tap if you like, but generally you're pretty much safe that that is off. When you turn it on, turn it all the way to the very last stop. Now when it reaches the end like that, just turn it back a turn like that. That's half a turn. And that will prevent it from seizing up at the end of the thread, because that's what happens is that they do lock on. That will prevent it from locking on and to keep it free. Now if you just do this every every couple of months, just give it a little turn down and back again and it will ensure that your tap will always be working when you need it. You never know when you're going to get an emergency. Same thing for the gate valve. If those of you with these in the cupboard, you know what these are like, these little gate valves. Now these ones can go really hard and solid. Once again, same thing, turn it all the way down. You'll notice a gate closing in there, can you see it? That's the gate of the gate valve, why they call them those. And then turn it back on again, as I said with the last one, the stopcock, full on, and then back just half a turn like that. Again, should prevent it from seizing up. So that's a little tip there. So you might say, what do we do if the stopcock doesn't work, we've got an emergency and can't get it off, it's, the handle snapped off it or it's gone solid, can't do anything with it. Uh, well that's time then maybe to check out where your outside stopcock is. So you should have one out on the pavement or it could possibly just be in the boundary of your property. So that's the next thing to do, we'll go and take a look at ours. So here's ours outside in the ground, out on the path. Clear it so that you've got no debris down it inside, get all the little bits out, all the way around the edge of the thing, so it's nice and clear. There'll be a little gripper at the front here, screwdriver, lift it like so, and pull it back. Now most of them have a cover like this to prevent earth going in. And one of the reasons I've told you about checking this is that quite often this is non-existent or on old stop cocks, um, you'll find there's nothing. And when you go to get to the main stop cock, it's full of earth. Absolutely chock a block to the top and you will need to dig it all out. Now you can see on mine that it's got a meter and a little blue valve down there. See that little blue valve, that's my main outside stop clock. Now strictly you're not supposed to turn these off, of course, um, you're supposed to give notification or whatever if you do, but to your own property and you're in a dire emergency, I would say turn it off. Now these little blue valves just switch half a turn across ways. You can see it's facing that way in at the moment, just turn it half a turn and that's it off, but for an ordinary stop clocks it's the same as I've showed you with the other one, just keep turning it until it's off and the same back on again and do the same thing just twist it back a quarter and a half a turn to make sure it stays free that way you've got your second protection there lined up ready to go in case the main stop cock should fail so are you saying that this might be full of earth if that cover isn't over it yeah sometimes with no cover the earth will be right up to the top right. so get that dug out got to do it by hand normally get it dug right down and then make sure that that tap does actually move a bit if you can get your hand on it and just just give it a twist make sure it is free if it isn't you can actually ring your local water company to free them up for you to make sure that it does uh, actually work and would you recommend one of those covers therefore if there isn't one on it 
Yeah, you should have one of these on it or make something up. Yeah. Uh, but only if you've got this type of pipe arrangement. If it's just a sheer earth thing with nothing around it, then you really are kind of stuck. Just make sure it's clear and got no earth. And that's about it, really. Okay. There you go. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> okay, then. I've mentioned, obviously, if your stop crop doesn't work and it's seized up, I'll put the links on there now so that you can go to the relevant videos because I've done lots of videos on stop cocks and what to do if they don't work and even turning the outside one off. So I'll put those links on if you need to refer to those. Other than that, it's just another little tip. Keep things running tickety-boo. We don't want any problems, do we? So that's it from me, just a little one. Like before, plumbing tips are the best thing going, aren't they? <laughs> we need them, peace of mind. Okay, all my stuff, you know where to go. Derrick and 33. Thanks for watching guys. Bye bye.